Hey guys, Fat Buddy Cat here, and this is round one of the Trailmaster MB202 versus the Megamoto MM212 Pro. All right, guys, I'm just gonna give you the uh, the walk around on these. First up is the Trailmaster MB202. Wildcat 223 performance motor stage 2 This bike has dual suspension stock rear hydraulic disc brake and a rear tensioning system We have a sprocket adapter and a 60 tooth sprocket. Up front, there's a 10 tooth sprocket on a driven pulley attached to a juggernaut. The pulley is set up like a jack shaft, it is standalone from the motor. Up front, I have the AO27 Sun F. Out back, we have the Power 2. These are both six ply tires, they're heavy duty. UFO fenders, spider grips, Amazon thumb throttle. So that rear hydraulic brake. Uh, this has the genuine Pro Taper 7 8 mini bike bends handlebars. Uh, also on this bike is an OMB warehouse adjustable billet plate. The reason for that plate is to move the motor left or right if you're sitting on it to center it on the frame okay and it also gives you forward and back adjustment so that you can run different size belts up here I notched this section of the frame just so that this plate can come forward and it can come forward all of that much. Um, on the seat, this has a modified bracket to hold it on. There is a piece of bar stock that I heated up and bent, and that works as a spline that goes through the entire seat. And also bolts on in the back. Other than that, it's all stock. Okay, and up next we have the Megamoto 212 Pro. I do have a torque converter cover for this. It's just temporarily not on there. For testing purposes, of course. Uh, while we're here, this bike also has a standalone jack shaft style pulley and a juggernaut. Uh, this bike features front suspension only, but it has dual hydraulic disc brakes. The other one is back here on the left side and they moved the chain to the right side with the jack shaft out back I have an adapter and a 60 tooth sprocket and a 10 tooth up front 
This bike has a Tillotson 212R. Um, it's roughly stage two, guys. You pull the governor out of these and they're basically stage two. Um, this bike has the Sun F AO 27s front and back. has the stock seat mounts, stock plastics, and I also took the headlight off of this bike. This one has the stock handlebars and I think that's about it guys. All right guys, real quick, I'm gonna give you some stats on these things. Um, the ground clearance, on the Trailmaster, eight to nine inches. We have eight inches from the ground to the bottom of this cradle and to the bottom of the frame here, not including the bolts, we're nine inches. Surprisingly, those two numbers over here are only an inch difference where I'm getting seven to eight inches okay from the ground to the bottom of the frame I'm about seven and a quarter and I'm about eight inches to the bottom of the plate on the inside one of the biggest differences between these two bikes is the wheelbase okay and this is a five inch difference which is quite considerable we have 50 inches on the Trailmaster and we have 45 inches from the center of the axle to the center of the axle on the Megamoto 212 Pro. Another considerable difference that comes into play into the ergonomics of these bikes would be the height of the crown before the handlebars. Okay. We have 34 inches on the Trailmaster, and we have only 30 inches over here on the Megamoto 212 Pro. So, true to form, the Megamoto handlebars are 36 to 37 inches, depending if you measure to the top of the grip or the top of the hydraulic brake. Over here on Big Dog, we are at 40 to 41 inches. All right, guys. Um, those Pro Taper bars came up a little bit, but that's up there. Another key factor to the way these bikes feel is the seat height and the approach okay first off we'll look at the seat height um we're looking at only 25 inches right here okay and that is measured right where the old butt cheeks go on the trail master our tail pad is 28 inches all right, I'm going to attempt to show you here. When you sit on the Megamoto 212 Pro, you have a more prone position, okay? Where you're up and your body is slightly forward when you're riding it, okay? You're not way back here. All right, your legs are ready for action. It's pretty comfortable. All right, in here we have the Trailmaster MB202. about six feet tall okay my feet touch the ground comfortably you 
because of these handlebars, my body is slightly prone. However, when we put our feet up, all right, I have the kickstand down, you tend to lay back a little bit, okay? And you have a feeling that you're reaching for the handlebars. Uh, these pro tapered bars make a big difference on this bike. Um, there's a few issues with this riding position, but it is comfortable. Speaking of issues, this would be a great time to go over all of the ones I know about. We'll go ahead and start with the Megamoto 212 Pro. Um, this is a great all-around base model. Uh, the only issue that I went after when I first got this guy was reinforcing the engine plate okay what I have is a piece of angle iron welded on this side the back side and this side as well the reason I used angle iron was to keep it tight to the plate tight to the frame all right and also to avoid interfering with the engine mounting locations another issue would be the chain guard all right i'm not even sure if it fits with the 60 tooth but the thing looks pretty janky so i just omitted it um there's some splatter up here from lubrication coming off of my chain um, I do have the guard that goes right here I just haven't installed it I am not a fan of having to run one size belt okay maybe you can run one shorter and tighter with the juggernaut I'm not sure yet but um we're still shredding the stalker up. Also, I've noticed this on more than just mine, but these keeps intended for the brake line, um, I guess you could bend them in, but and bend them around however you want them shaped or whatnot, but I actually had one vibrate right off, and that one never stays in there. It always pulls out. So... couple zip ties ready to rock that's really about it for the Megamoto next up we have the Trailmaster MB202 um, well the first thing that's wrong with it right now guys I don't have the kill switch installed okay but I do have one for it um, if you're going to be doing modifications on these bikes uh, let alone riding one in general you should always have two. Alright, um, one of the big issues that I'm having um, is sort of self-created, okay? And that's with the Wildcat 223 and these big 6-ply Sun F tires, okay? We have a lot more rotation, a lot more force and friction being acted on things okay including our brake caliper um, whether it's the caliper itself or the pads um, she heats right up after about eight good roundabouts and uh, they pretty much fade to nothing so that can get a little bit hairy this issue has only struck me once guys and that is the lack of a chain tensioner. 
as you can see we're going to be addressing that but before we do um, I'll explain my experience with this problem I was trail riding off camera I know where um, and two times when the suspension fully compressed okay and then I got on it you know with the double beef no holding the bacon um, I was able to dislodge the chain okay uh, the first time I, I could say it was a dislodge because I think I had a stick that had traveled in okay and then when it bound up and did it slack thing that was enough to push it off uh, the second time I was creeping along and I was going through like a little whoopty thing and I goosed it off the whoop so I could just skip with the front wheel and cruise over it with the back well it didn't like that at all and just threw the chain so we can't be having that all right guys and one of the last problems that I have um, are these foot pegs okay these are absolutely terrible um, I have a new one there that I haven't even used um, this one is missing it's over here and this one's just kind of hanging out uh, I left it so you could see what happened to it um, two and a half foot berm okay just doing drop-ins two and a half to three feet okay so the front wheel was never any higher than that and the back wheel barely left the ground coming down into a flat forward drop okay you wouldn't expect that to happen to your foot peg because you're in a seated position well here's the thing you're in a seated position but you're kind of like in the wrong seated position all right and what happens is you push back with your feet and when you land your weight transfers through your hips and directly into those pegs and uh these things can't hang with fat buddy cat uh-uh for example guys over here on the megamoto when i sat on this bike you noticed i had what i said was a more prone position well with your leg bent okay before it goes to the peg the brunt of the force is going to be absorbed at your your glutes right your tailbone everything right there then it's going to transfer it through your legs because you're already bent okay so it's going to work like a shock absorber before it returns down to the foot area all right guys this next shot this is going to be mostly for the guys who might have one bike and not the other but you're thinking about getting the pair well where do you see them side by side that's crazy right you hear those numbers but until you see it it's hard to believe how much bigger the Trailmaster really is. And I mean, it just out angles the Megamoto. No matter how you look at it. Even right there, see the handlebars, the suspension, the tires. This is a pretty flat area right here.
Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's going to be it for round one. In round two, we'll get these not-so-many bikes out and start testing their capabilities. As always, it's a work in progress. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. I catch you on the next one.